Good morning and welcome. I welcome you in the name of the God who brings us rain. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, for any guests with us this morning, I am Reverend Corey Morris, a senior pastor, and I have the honor this morning of welcoming you, and also I will be bringing the message later in the service. If you are a guest with us, either in person or online, um, we just want to make sure that you know we have a gift for you. Uh, those are in the back, I believe, uh, the entryway uh, cup. You're welcome to take one of those. It has a gift card inside. If you are online with us, you're, and I'm not sure where to look, which way is on? Maybe this way? <laughs> um, if you are online with us, uh, then uh, you can make sure you register with us and we will get one of those cards mailed to you as well. Uh, we fulfill our mission to make disciples for Jesus Christ by following our pathway, living our faith, nurturing families, serving our communities. On Wednesday is our fourth and our final hospitality training. I anticipate seeing all of you in the North-South Parlor with me at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, we are learning to do this well, and it's true for all organizations. Learning to do hospitality well is uh, vital to their survival. And uh, we want to be a part of not only just surviving, but thriving. We want to learn how to do this exceptionally well. We have our all church camp out, our activities and camp out that's coming up this weekend. Uh, that will be beginning on Saturday, the 23rd. At 2 p.m., they will begin setting up camp. Activities will start shortly after that. And then there's a whole evening of activities planned, and some of that will be around the bonfire uh, in the evening. So come for whatever part of that you can. They will be, many will be spending the night, so bring your tent or your camper, you're welcome to join. And uh, then they'll be worshiping with us in the morning on Sunday the 24th. Other important items of ministry and fellowship are listed in your announcements uh, on the bulletin this morning. So please make sure you look through those for all those details. One of those that is not listed, it's coming up July 25th. That is a Monday. Uh, this is a denominational information meeting. It's called a district listening session. We are hosting it for our district. We are one of the four different sites in the district. And uh, we will be meeting from 7 to 8.30 in the sanctuary downtown. This meeting will be led by our conference superintendent. We will hear a video from the bishop, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. This is about our denominational challenges with those churches that are disaffiliating, what that means, what they look like for the future of the United Methodist Church, and so forth. So bring your questions and come and join that group. Uh, pastor Peggy, as our other United Methodist pastor, will be hosting that as I will be meeting my new, two new grandsons that day. So I will be occupied in Indianapolis holding baby boys. So. <laughs> but please pray for our denomination, and if you have an extra prayer, uh, please pray for my daughter and the new babies to come. Because God heartily welcomes us, we extend greetings in the name of Christ to one another. If you've already begun your private time of prayer, you may remain seated in an attitude of prayer. Let us now stand in body or spirit and greet one another in the name of Christ. Thank you. I'm going to enjoy that for the next couple of days. <laughs>
They all work together at Plain Song, and uh, they are joining us as vocalists this morning um, as they help us center our hearts for worship. Welcome.
If we are really wise, we'll think this over. It is time we appreciate God's deep love. <laughs> you lost your ring. Oh, that's a sad thing too. And you know, it's important when we lose something. When we lose something, what do we start doing when we lose something? What's the very first thing we start doing? We start looking for it. We search high and low. We trace our steps. We go back where we might think we might have been. Well, do you know that looking for lost things is really important to Jesus? Jesus told three parables about lost things. And we know that no matter what, Jesus will always search for lost people and lost things. Hold on a second. <laughs> He's good. He's good. So, I want you guys to think about how we can look, not just for lost baby dolls and lost rings, but... Help look for people who don't know Jesus and help them to find Jesus. Because Jesus is looking for them, but sometimes we need to help them out by telling people that Jesus loves them. So can you guys help me do that this week? If you see somebody that you think may not know about Jesus' love, maybe you can show them that Jesus loves them. Okay? So head this way, and I'll give you a bag to take back to your seats with. Thank you. 
for bringing your gifts, your tithes and offerings uh, to worship today. Let's pray. Loving Lord, you are good. And the plans you have for us are for our good and for our glory. You said, give, and it will be given to you, for in the same measure that you give, it will be given back to you. And we give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. So we ask that you receive our offerings and that you will continue to supply all our needs. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands. <coughs> and your joy be in our souls. In your good name we pray. Amen.
Would you reflect with me this morning on how much our Lord loves each of us? Please bow with me. Gracious and loving Lord, creator of all that we hold dear, we bow before you in thanksgiving. You have given us life eternally, forgiveness, our families and friends, and such an abundance of loving gifts that we are challenged to note and acknowledge even a few of them. Lord, it is small wonder that we ask, what can we be or do to repay your love? We're challenged to understand how you could love us as you do, more even than we love ourselves. Lord, as we worship in this great cathedral, help us to consider the wideness of your love. Help us to reflect your loving sunshine to others. Help us to realize that you place people in our lives that they may see your love reflected in us. Remind us that our lonely neighbor, that that driver who just cut us off in traffic, that homeless person who is persistently needy, and many more are people whom you love and are placed in our lives as opportunities for us to be mirrors of your love for us. Equip us, Lord, to be pools of your spirit in our own individual lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Bill Brown will come up and read our scripture for us, but I wanted to make you aware that you are going to participate in the scripture reading of Psalm 136. It is highlighted there for you. It's kind of a scripture and response. Uh, it's written that way, so I'll explain what that's all about in a little bit. We'll find out. But please uh, be ready to participate. Our scripture reading this morning is from Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. Our response of reading this morning is from Psalm 136. Please join me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. And his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. And his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. And his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. And his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. And his love endures forever. Who made the great lights. And his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. And his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. And his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate. And his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. And his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. And his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. And his love endures forever. This is God's word for God's people today. Thanks be to God. and that would be Pompeii. It is an ancient city. It was clear back in the early 70 AD that it was completely destroyed. This was a community primarily Roman at the time, and it was located in what is now Italy, near the Bay of Naples. And this city uh, is one that was buried by an active volcano. When the volcano erupted, the ash and the lava uh, completely swallowed the city and all of its inhabitants. The one thing that archaeologists tell us about this was that as the city was there, there were 20,000 people uh, supposedly there at the time. In fact, they have found remains uh, and evidence of at least that many, that were in the city at the time. But what archaeologists tell us about that, it was not the volcano that killed the people. Think about that. I think if I had lava rolling in over me, that would be about enough to do it, right? <laughs> Literally, it was, but there was enough warning. When a volcano erupts, there is ash. There is what's equivalent to an earthquake. The people had plenty of warning to get out of town. But what killed the people of Pompeii is they were not aware. Today, 
we are going to be reminded to stay aware of God's great love for us. To continually to remember that. There's something else, though, about Pompeii. All of the people, they were found in different uh, areas where life had been taking place. Uh, so those that eventually kind of took a heads up when ash began to burn and lava began to roll, uh, they actually, they found large, large groups of people in basements. They found them gathered in other areas where they had come together and kind of run into a huddle to protect themselves. Uh, again, way too late to be saved from what was upon them. But there was one that stands out, one Roman soldier that stands out, that they have actually uncovered his encased being, still in his guard position at the gate. While ash was falling on him, while it felt like the earth was just shaking and going to swallow him up, while the lava literally came in to the city, there he stood, staff in hand as a guard of the gate. What an image of being faithful. That image of being faithful is something that we need to kind of hold on to because no matter what, no matter what we go through, not only are we called to be faithful, but we can trust that we have a faithful God. We're going to hear more about that too. <clears throat> Psalm 136 that we've shared this morning. That is a, just a beautiful psalm. It's called the Alleluia Psalm. And one of the reasons that it's called an Alleluia Psalm is that there is no complaining in this psalm. There's no requesting of anything from God. There's no situation that's put out there before God to present. No conflict discussed. It is simply a psalm that is in praise of our God. And it is written the way it is written with the response so that it would have been read in the synagogues, in the groups of the Jewish who were teaching others. This song would have been sung or read just as we heard and participated this morning. There is a line that is offered by the reader. And then the congregation would say, his love endures forever. Now, actually, you're going to participate in the entire sermon. Because whenever I go, you're going to say, his love endures forever. There you go. And that's how this psalm was written. These first verses of the psalm. We hear songs of praise telling us who God is, who this God is that we're praising. And first we hear that God is good. God is God of gods and Lord of lords. Now, that might seem, okay, we're talking about God here. That's not such a different or amazing thing. But it's so important that we acknowledge those things about our God. Because one, if God is not good... We would not trust God. God is good. And also, God is the God. God is a supreme being. If God was not, if he was just an average, average go-lucky guy among us, we would not worship him. God is a supreme being. And so those acknowledgments at the beginning of this psalm are very important. And then the psalm goes on to itemize those things that the Israelites experienced in the Exodus. 
if they would have experienced the actual saving in the Exodus, taking them out of Egypt, and then they experienced the wilderness. And it goes on to tell the story, and it concludes with statements where God remembered them always. God freed them. God fed them. The last verses that we heard this morning, too. God was faithful and in his love provided all that was needed. Pretty powerful statements. A song where God's love endures forever. You see, we have many things that can interrupt that. We hear these things about our God. But sometimes when we hear love, we interpret God is love, how we understand love. You see, we also heard from Romans 8, or Romans 5, I'm sorry, Romans 5. And in Romans 5, Paul tells us in these few short verses, he gives us and identifies his version of John 3.16. Of course, I'm hoping that you remember that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, here Paul says, out of God's great love, he offered his son sacrificially. It was a sacrificial death. Even while we were no good whatsoever to God. Even while we were yet a sinner. And Paul talks about the very same thing in, that Psalm 136 talks about. About this great God of ours. About this God who offers us amazing love. But you see, it's different than the love that we offer one another. We try hard, but we fall short. You see, our love is conditional. Most of the time is, if you do this for me, if you're like this, then I'll love you. We put parameters on how we will love and whom we will love. We put barriers up. Some are big and obvious. You know, if you're not a murderer, I can love you. But if you've murdered somebody, I mean, that's one of those pretty big ones, right? But God loves even those. This is the kind of love that God offers. And we also hear that God's love endures. His love endures forever. It's different than ours. His love is for us no matter what we're facing, no matter what problems we have. It's a love that doesn't end just because this life ends. It is eternal. It's love to God's love for us is just an amazing love. We Often, we can tell how important someone is to us by what we're willing to do for them or to give up for them. Right? How important they are. I mean, if they make a special trip, I'll never forget my parents, who lived an hour and a half away from me when I was in college. And I was really struggling, and I tried not to tell that over the phone. You know, you can sound any way you want for five minutes over the phone, right? And I tried real hard not 
just sound completely in distress, but it didn't work. And whatever time it took them to get there from an hour and a half drive, I had, at that time, a knock on my door in my dorm room. I lived in the dorm. Knock on the door. They were the last two people I expected to see in my entire life. They said, we know you're going through a hard time. We just came to give you a hug. Gave me a hug, turned around, and drove home. That was how much I meant to them. That's the kind of love that God offers. His love endures An example of going the other way of parameters, there were four, some four men who play golf regularly. They play every single week, the same day, every single week, and they had a conversation one time as they're kind of getting up there in years, and they had decided that they would all notify their next of kin that when they died, that their funeral could not be on a Saturday. <laughs> and the question, of course, is why not on a Saturday? Because their golf buddies would not attend the funeral on a Saturday. That's when they played golf. Folks, we send signals to one another all the time about how important we are or how unimportant we are to one another. God's message to us is that we are important to God. And God's love for us endures forever. Not only do we love differently or we value one another differently than God, but there are other examples in life where God is just present when we are not necessarily present for one another. And in those times, in those examples of life, when we have tough times and are struggling, when we don't want to tell friends that we're having a hard time and they're not reading between the lines to hear it in our voice or to see it in our lack of attendance or our lack of participation or our eyes when we don't think anyone's watching. God does. God sees and God knows and God cares because his love endures At 50 years old, he was fired. He had been at his job for a long time. But the church fired him. He was a pastor and he had developed asthma and he couldn't preach loud enough. So he was fired. And Ch Thomas Chilhorn uh, went out then, found himself another job, and he sold brushes door to door in Kentucky. And you would think that he was pretty, probably pretty depressed, pretty uh, upset about life. I mean, this at 50 years old and having to start over in something you never really wanted to do. But because of life situation, he was thrust into this new profession of selling door to door, where I don't know about you, but when we did have door to door salespeople, they were not necessarily welcome, right? Didn't either answer the door, or you just did and say not interested, and the door shut. So not a time where he was welcomed anywhere at least not professionally. So it probably would have been a very, very down time for Thomas. But seven years into selling brushes, his spirit still thrilled in the fact that 
God's love was forever for him. And he penned a poem that many of you, I'm hoping, are familiar with in the church. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. No matter how we fall short, ourselves personally, no matter what is thrust upon us, no matter what we do that might separate us from our God, God is loving us. His love is for here and now, for all time, no matter what, and even into death. It's for eternity. When we think that our eternity only begins after we die, so we really need to be concerned that we get it right before we walk through those heavenly gates. But you see, God loves us beyond now. Eternity starts when we accept the love that God has for us now. And living in that changes life. That's why I invite you today to never, ever forget. His love endures forever. That's for you. That's for me. That's for everyone. God's love endures forever. We're going to sing together, I need thee every hour. <clears throat> and I want you to claim that. Claim that you need Jesus Christ, that you need this love of God every single hour. Stay aware of God's blessings around you day in and day out. Let us sing together.
be in our benediction. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God 